Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna be trying to fix everything that's wrong on this all road that I picked up not too long ago. Okay, the tune is fully uploaded. We have the ignition off, on. Okay, baby. So now we have to take this thing apart and try and find out why the check engine light is not on. Ta-da. Our check engine light is right here. And look what's in there. Uh -huh. Another issue I do know I have is the fan wiring. So it did have some sort of a weird uh, fan wiring situation previously. Uh, there was a switch inside the car that would control the fans. Uh, these are aftermarket fans. Um, the OEM one in here has been deleted. Uh, which I suppose is okay. That's good. Uh, I'm assuming these are an upgrade uh, However, I did get rid of all that wiring they had on here because I don't like the way it looked I don't like the way it was done uh, So we do have to fix that this wire over here is ripped which is likely from the car being so low So the fans weren't working in the first place But before I do any of that I should definitely check whether or not these fans work period positive and negative Okay. Good enough for me. Uh, the most common way of uh, wiring the electric fan switch is to tap into this brown and green wire on pin 7 of this connector. I think that has something to do with the coolant temperature switch. I did see some I did see some information about how this uh, causes the fans to go off whenever you have the AC on, uh, which I think is okay. I'm not against that. So this is going to be our signal wire. And then this guy here is what's going to be fed by that signal wire. The only reason why I depend this was to be able to seal this back up and to be able to slide one of these guys on there. I'm not sure if this one will fit, but that would be nice. So now, what we have here is a wire that gets the signal to activate the fans. Problem is, is that this wire or that wire are not big enough or thick enough to be able to handle the load to power the fans. We need to transfer this to a relay right here, which in turn is going to activate the relay and get it to switch on and have power to two other thicker wires that will go straight to the fans. now finished we have connected to the battery battery goes to the relay it's currently unbolted because we have to do some testing and then from the relay we got the positive end signal wire going down over here signal wire connects to our tap positive cable goes down to the fans connects both fans right here and then we have the negative from the fans going down to that ground back there ah there it is Hello. We got fans. It works. Assuming that we have the appropriate signal coming from that wire, uh, which should be true based on the forums, we should be good to go. Okay, so to fix the... I don't know if I actually covered this. Basically, this car has really, really bad uh, wheel shake and vibration uh, at anything over 50 miles an hour. I uh, took it for a drive not too long ago, and yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. It, it felt scary driving it at anything over 45, 50. One of the potential reasons for that is the fact that obviously the wheels could just be significantly out of balance. The tires look okay. I don't see any major wear. They're relatively new. But very likely it might have something to do with the fact that there were no hub rings on this. This bore on the wheels is, I can't remember what the exact millimeter sizes are, but this was in the 80s. This was in 50s. I think this is a... What's the stock one? 57.1 or something like that. These were like 86. Um, so massive, massive gap between the wheel and the hub here. Uh, so I bought these rings that hopefully might help us with the vibrations. 
Uh, and another issue that could have caused those is these uh, stud conversion slash spacers. First of all, ridiculously cheap lug nuts. I mean, they feel like they're plastic. Uh, secondly, I mean, I don't mind the spacer itself. Obviously, I'm about to use spacers up until, at least up until I uh, find a new wheel solution for this. Uh, but these studs, I mean, basically, I don't love it. We're going to get rid of it. And uh, we're also missing half of these lug nuts. So I have no, I would rather just put these on and use stuck lugs. <laughs> This one just came out with a stud. Dear Lord, this car looks so good from the back. I mean, half fitment. Eh. It's not bad. I think she could use some thicker tires, but she does look pretty good. Just, if it wasn't for these gold wheels, I think they would look so much better black. leaking okay so we do have some smoke coming out from here could be oil most likely is oil um, potentially the covers on the back of cams uh, they got melted and they're leaking on oil they definitely did get a little warped I saw that there was some deformation on them uh, so could be that it's leaking oil could also be coming from the valve covers We'll look into it, but she made it home and made some cool noises. So now this car is pretty drivable, but as you can see, it's missing both front and rear bumper. The seats are not bolted down. Some of the interior pieces are missing. It, it has a few issues that if they're fixed, this car will actually be in a very clean condition. And uh, this is a manual. This is a, it is actually quite valuable when it's clean. Like these things can go for like 10 grand on cars and beds when they're in good condition. Now, am I actually going to put it up on cars and bids? That's a separate question because I absolutely fucking love this car and I might actually sell my B5S4. Whoopsies. Well, basically I might actually sell my B5S4 and keep this thing instead of that uh, because I absolutely love this car. The driver's side taillight has a big crack. It's missing a pretty major piece right here. And the car did come with a Euro bumper or at least this plate holder. Uh, which is cool and all but that means that i can't put my license plate on here next we have these uh c7 
I believe, or C8, no, C7 S6 seats, which are awesome. Uh, the previous owner just threw them in. They're not bolted down. They're not in any way mounted to the car. And this car also came with a steering wheel that I really didn't like. So we got rid of that, but turns out the previous owner also had cut the clock spring off of that, uh, off of the steering column in order to install that because the steering wheel did not, the hub didn't have the opening for it. A whole bunch of faults such as ABS, traction control, all kinds of stuff that I don't really like seeing on the dash because obviously the steering angle sensor is disconnected with no clock spring. If you're curious, this is what the steering wheel used to look like. Um, I mean, I could see why somebody would like it, but uh, that somebody is just not me. I don't like giant gold things. I also don't like dash lights. And uh, yeah, just not a big fan of that. This here is actually one of the seats that came out of the uh, passenger side uh, because I'm trying to figure out the seat bracket situation and see if I can engineer something that would make this fit properly inside the car and stay secured. As you can probably tell, there's quite a bit of different things, like a lot of parts. There's a lot of parts that that car needs. Like there's also a kick panel on the interior that's missing. And all these little parts can adapt to a decent amount of money, even from like cheaper part outs and junkyards. I actually got quoted by a junkyard and I think they wanted like seven or 800 bucks for everything I need which is not an unreasonable price, uh, but they were giving me like eBay prices, uh, which is usually more expensive rather than like actual junkyards. So I decided to do what any rational person would do. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I love having parts cars. I think it's one of the best things you can do if you work in cars and if you have like a pretty big project. It's fantastic to have a parts car because usually you can find them for so freaking cheap. This thing, $300 with transportation costs because I had to drive like three hours away I would say like maybe 400 450 but still like a, a fantastic deal because uh, I know the front bumper is currently missing but it's actually in the car we're gonna go through what's inside uh, and make sure that we have everything we need and this car actually more or less complete except for the engine and transmission because the previous owner also has a manual uh, all road and he used this as a engine donor because his timing belt snapped. But uh, we have almost everything we could possibly need for our old road. In this exact spot, uh, I used to have a Touareg parts car uh, that was an engine donor for my Touareg. Uh, this is an ongoing project. We're gonna, we're gonna finish it one day, one day, because I need my lift back. That thing has been on there for two months. But we got rid of the parts Touareg, and if you're curious, what do you do with the parts car after you're done with it? What I did, I just listed it for free on Facebook Marketplace as scrap. And I had plenty of people willing to pick it up and it was gone within a day. Because at the end of the day, uh, if you bring that to a scrap yard, you're gonna get like 150 bucks or maybe 200 bucks. And that's gonna make up for a good chunk of uh, what this car had cost you. But because to this day, I still somehow do not have a trailer. Uh, it's not worth the trouble for me to bring it and load it up and bring it to the scrap yard. So I decided not to do that and give it away for free. Uh, but one of the major things with this car is rust as you can see we have a basically we have a two foot rust hole in the driver door uh, Kind of unfortunate, but what can you do? Uh, and very very unfortunately the hatch also has some rust damage as you can see right there It's actually in the exact same spot if I'm not mistaken as the rust hole on my hatch uh, Right here under the 2.7 T. However, we do have this very clean uh, plate holder, which is good and obviously it's meant for this country so uh, I think that's uh, more or less of a bonus. Like I respect the European uh, number plates. It's pretty cool out here in the States to see that. Gives it that import look, but the practicality of it is missing. And I don't like the fact that the, you know, you're required to have an American plate on here. So, and you can put it on in a Euro plate holder, but it's just not never gonna fit right. It just sticks out and it doesn't look very good. So I'm just not a fan. And we also have a rear bumper, which is not perfect. I uh, definitely could use some love. I might break even when I uh, sell off whatever I see in this car that I know is valuable. For example, one of the catalytic converters uh, that's under the car, the secondary catalytic converters, I think they're the more valuable ones. And it's actually still in the car. Uh, this little cargo cover, I don't know how to take it off yet. Uh, I'll figure it out later. But very frequently people lose these or when they sell a car, they forget these in their garage or something and they never give it to the next seller. So very frequently these old roads are missing them and uh, they've become pretty valuable because there's a demand for them and I'll be able to, I don't think mine came with it, so I'll probably just put it on my car, but if I wanted to sell it, I could probably get a couple hundred bucks for just for that. And then we have the stock head unit. We have a bunch of 
interior seats and stuff like that, which uh, I think is going to be able to sell relatively easily. No way. Oh my God.